Hi, this is Bruce, and today we're going to look at how to use OnSend UI to create a sidebar navigation, or what they call the uh, splitter. So this is a third pattern of doing some navigation. Um, in the first uh, demo, we looked at how to do navigation using um, stacking pages, so a linear pattern. In the second demo, uh, we looked at how to use tabs in order to navigate from page to page. And then now we're going to look at how to use a uh, side menu or a splitter pattern in order to uh, navigate from page to page. So you can see here, I've got a file all set up with uh, links to the Cloudfare, Cloudflare CDN uh, for the uh, com both the components and the, uh, anyway. With, okay. So I'm gonna come back here to the playground and I'm going to copy the HTML and paste it into the body. And then I'm going to copy the JavaScript and I'll create a JavaScript file. And paste the, the code. Now if we take this and upload these, oh, need to make sure I link to it. And upload it. And let's see if that works. So you can see I can click on um, the hamburger menu in the top left hand corner and it's navigating from the home to the settings to the about page. Or if I swipe, you can see I can swipe open um, the, the page as if I was on mobile. So it's very, very, uh, very handy that way. Or it's a nice, uh, nice native app feeling uh, interface, user interface. And I can also just swipe or, or drag out from the left and navigate that way, which gives us a nice native app feeling user interface. So let's look at how we can possibly improve the code. You can see here we've got a lot of JavaScript inserted into our HTML uh, file. Ideally what we'd like to do to make it um, a little bit better structured as well as give us a little bit more efficiency in the future is to remove the on-click events from the HTML um, and put the JavaScript uh, and put the Java and and put the put the JavaScript events and put the JavaScript events into our JavaScript file where they belong. So what we first of all what we need to do is remove them from here. And I'll be replacing them with an href. that we'll use in order to identify which button has been clicked. 
Now back here, what I'm going to do was we'll leave these for now is create a selector based on the ons list item tag right here. So we will go call it a nav item, I guess. And we'll use query selector all. To select those elements only inside the menu. And then for each nav item, we will add uh, an event listener. for when the user clicks, and that will call a load page function. So now let's create that load page function. And this already has a lot of what we are going to need, but first of all, we have to go and get the href attribute from our menu items or nav items. So I'll, I'll comment out this area and we'll just make sure that we're getting those properly. And we'll upload, make sure this is uploaded, and refresh. And let's see if we are getting the href, and we are. So you can see them over here in the, in the uh, console. So now what we need to do is to open those up. So we'll let the page that we want to link to be equal to the href attribute of the element that we've clicked on. Content load page, this menu, I think that looks good. And you can see it is in fact working. So the next thing we would like to do is to also get rid of um, the on click event here to open up the menu. So we can use the ons toolbar button. and do something similar. So, so open nav equals And then we'll create the event handler or the event listener. Which will also be a click. And we'll call the function open menu
But if we test this, you'll see that it won't work. We can still drag, but the clicking doesn't work. And the reason is we have to make sure that the uh, page has already been created before we can add uh, selectors and listeners to it. So if we go back to here, back to our guide, and we look up under page lifecycle, you can see they've got a list of um, methods or events that um, fire at different points in the page. So what, you know, including initialize, destroy, show, and hide. The one we're looking for is uh, to initialize. So when the page is initialized, then we're going to create those um, the, the, those events. Um, so on the document, we're going to add the event listener, init, and we'll make it an anonymous function. And then we'll put the selector and the addition of the event listener inside the init I put the order in my brackets wrong. And there you go. Now you can see we've removed um, the on click events. Oh, toolbar button. Let's just make sure we remove it. And you can see we've removed the on click events from the HTML. And we've put those user interaction events into JavaScript where they belong. We can get rid of the array of functions here, clean up the code a little bit, and that should be good. I hope this helps.